So now I'm going to add another cube and I'm going to enter edit mode and move it up by one. My, my SD card is, you know, I'm going to apply the rotation and scale so things are lined up properly. Uh, my SD card is 23.9 wide. I want it to have at least two millimeters on each side of this card. So hmm, I'm also going to turn that off because I don't like it. So uh, 23.9, we'll call it 24 plus 2 on this side is 26 plus 2 on that side is 28. I could just go for an even 30. Okay. Um, the SD card is 2.12, and I want it to be 2 this way and 2 that way at least. So we'll say uh, that's uh, 6 point something, so we'll just say that that's 6. I know I'm talking about doing it exactly precise and then I'm fudging the numbers. I, I, I know. Uh, I'm also going to fudge this a little bit. Because imagine that I centered that perfectly, which I did. But imagine that I did. And how deep do I want it? Well, the truth is I can have it be as deep in the Z as I want. 20 millimeters? Nah, that's too much. 10? Sorry, I keep on nicking the microphone. You guys with headphones are going, ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry. I'm a little bit sorry. Okay, so there is a holder for the ring that the SD card will be able to slid into. Now let's make the ring part of it. I'm basically giving away a whole chapter of my book here, but oh well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my finger. Now, when measuring your finger, you're going to get it wrong. I'm going to measure my finger here, and I'm going to be nice and soft, barely going to touch the skin, 20 millimeters, okay? What I recommend you do, let's add a cylinder, and come over here, see you can edit this cylinder, where's my cylinder, there he is, see him? And my radius, radius, remember the difference between radius and diameter. I just measured it at 20 millimeters, so my radius is 20 divided by 2. Oh, isn't that neat? I just typed 20 slash 2 divided by 2, and it's going to do the division for me. I, here, I'll do that again now that you can get it out of the way of my picture. 20 divided by 2. Does it for you? You don't. You could do complex math right in there. It'll do it for you. Okay, that's super cool. And the depth. I'm gonna make this nice and deep. I'm gonna say that it's uh, 20 deep because this is this is, and I'll name it over here. My finger. Oh, I forgot. I should name all of my objects. SD card. SD card holder. You know, in the book, I talk about naming objects all the time, and in the book, it looks like I remember to name things all the time, but in reality, it happened like this all the time. I would do stuff and then go, oh, I need to name everything. So that's my finger simulation right there. That's not the ring. The ring, let's add another cylinder, and it remembers the settings from last time. So I want to add uh, four millimeters to, to this cylinder, that way it's... It's uh, to that side and to that side. That doesn't look right. That is not my finger. Hold on for a second. Yeah, it's measuring at 20 millimeters. <clears throat> Let's see. My finger in relation to an SD card. Yeah, that's the best. I got, I got chunky fingers that are about the size of an SD card. So, no, that's not right, though. You know, I'm going to increase it. I'm going to delete this one. My finger is going to be 24, 24. We'll just, we'll just leave the Z as 20. Okay. See, I'm fudging it a little bit, but that's all right. I feel better about that. And, and you can, okay, so here's the point that I was going to talk about. We need this to be a uh, radius of 24 divided by 2 uh, plus plus 4 more. That way the ring is a little bit bigger than the finger. It needs to be at least 2 millimeters. Remember I talked about the first video with YHT that you want to have, you know, 
Two millimeters is good, but I'm only going to make its depth one. That way I can enter edit mode, move it up by, oh, actually I made a mistake. I have to move it up by 0.5 so that the bottom is lined up with the bottom of the SD card holder. And then, I'm going to select all these vertices on the top. They're at one, so I'm going to move them up two. So they're, so it's three millimeters thick. That seems about right. I'm going to hit Control R and slice it in the middle, and then I'm going to scale it up. Not a whole lot. I don't want to break that YHT angle, but I want to have a little bit of form to my ring. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit crazy with this. I'm going to slice, do it twice, and then there we go. There's a real stylish ring, right? Now we go into the Boolean tools, add a Boolean modifier, and difference out the finger. And this thing, I'm not convinced that I did that right. One, two, three, four, I made it because I forgot the difference between radius and diameter. I'm a dummy. But that's all right, we can fix it here. Uh, We'll just subtract two from this, and we'll subtract two from this. Notice the Boolean modifier handled that just fine. I was okay with it. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, what I just did is I looked here, and I saw that the edge of this one cylinder was here, and the edge of this was here, and I counted the grid lines. One, two, and I still see three. And so I adjusted the dimensions of this by subtraction. Mm. I don't like it. No, sir, I do not like it. 0.5. Uh, subtract another 0.5. Well, that, that's, that's it. That's, that's closer. So... Uh, I'm just going to type it in by hand, 24.483. There we go. Thrilling, isn't it? Watching me play with the numbers. I'm sorry for not providing a ridiculously entertaining video this time. Okay, here's what I recommend you do at this point. At this point, I recommend you take this ring, file, export it as an STL, call it test ring, print it out, and try it on. And if it needs to be bigger, if you need to make the finger bigger or the ring bigger, adjust it and make it however you want. But let's assume that this worked. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to grab these guys together and move them back in the Y. Oh, you know what? I'm talking about precision and I didn't do it precisely. Uh, here's, here's another trick. Watch this. In the, oh, I'm covering it up with my, you know what, for you guys, I'm going to turn off Simon there. Whoop. Okay. Now, watch this. In the lower right-hand corner, way down there, you can see how much the movement is. And I'm moving it 15.15. Looks like 15 is the way to go, so I'm going to hit backspace type 15 and it will turn it into a exact movement so you can use that to kind of guesstimate it and then type it in to finalize it to be exactly what you're looking for how cool is that tell me blender can't do exact modeling you'd lie all right here we go uh yep that looks about right that looks about right that'll print on the bottom last thing to do is we need to subtract out the hole um, you know, I forgot something. If I do this hole exactly the same size as my SD card, this is going to be really, really tight. Sometimes too tight to put it in. It might be a good idea to take your SD card and increase it by just a little bit. Maybe add on, I don't know, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, maybe one millimeter. Um, that way... Generally speaking, I like to add 0.2 for like a tight fit, but I want this to be tight enough that it won't fall out when I turn my hand upside down, but I don't want it to be so tight that it won't work at all. So uh, I'll play with these numbers, but I'm going to add one millimeter. That's 0.5 on all sides. 
um, which means I also have to adjust where it sits. And I'm kind of doing a combination of precise and exact modeling. I could be more exact if I planned it out a little bit better, but I'm shooting from the hip here, guys, because that's the way I roll. Okay, I'm going to hide this so that I can do this all at once. And in fact, I'm going to hide this too. Here we go. Boolean modifiers. We're going to have two Boolean modifiers. We're going to... Actually, first we're going to union on the cylinder that is the ring, because I didn't name it. And then we're going to difference out the SD card. And there we have a ring, and we can 3D print it, and it will work. Uh, flat bottom, YHT is satisfied. We're good. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the order that I Boolean them. If I had flipped the order, did you see what happened here? Let me flip it back. Okay, what happened here? What happened here is the card got, or the, the ring got Boolean into it after the card got subtracted out of it, which means that the, the ring got put into the inside hole. I don't want that. So I do the ring onto it first and then Boolean the hole out of it because when you do the ring, uh, this is all just one solid object. And then when you subtract that hole, uh, it subtracts it from that solid object, not from the object with the ring. So now that all that Boolean operation is done, and it's a non-destructive Boolean operation, there is a thing to remember about the Boolean operator. If I decide that, oh, I want to adjust this a little bit and move it a little bit, the other objects, the hole isn't moving, the ring isn't moving, I need to grab all of the parent objects and move them together, or you can join them together and things like that, parent them together, but never mind. Uh, for now, just remember, if you need to move something that's Boolean together, move all of them together. And then I can file, export this, and print it. So there we go. Blender can do precise CAD-like modeling. It's not built for it. Oh, there was, there, oh, there was one more trick I was going to show you. In edit mode, you can come down here in the properties menu. Again, wonderful properties menu. And you can edge info. Show me the length of the edges. Look at these edges. Uh... Oh, only works if you uh, apply the, the scale. Okay, there we go. See, I know that this edge is 6 and this edge is 30. And so if I decide to, to change things around and edit things uh, and, you know, scale it in the X or whatever, I can see how that's affecting all of my everything. And so that's a little bit more CAD-like. You can do that too. Your edge info, you can get the edge, you can get the angle. It gets confusing though. Uh, area of the faces, uh, angle of the faces, cool stuff available right there. That happens in edit mode. Notice it goes away when you exit edit mode. Um, Blender, precise modeling, can do. Before I go, I want to thank everybody who subscribed to my channel in the past uh, couple of weeks. You guys are motivating me to do it. In fact, I want to I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you each by name. Christopher Butler, Mike Hellers, Doodad Does again, of course, uh, Carlos Velez, John M. Bruster, Steve Gong, 66 T-Bird 1, apparently a car guy, Dexter 888, or Dexter 880, Nico Rivera, Jacko Van de Marie, Oral Tosin, Tony Walker, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys will also follow me on my blog. The address of it is down there the whole time. And uh, that I ha sometimes have off video adventures, so go check me out down there. But thank you again so much for watching. You guys are the wind beneath my wings. Please, share this with other people. I hope you find it useful. I hope you didn't find it too long. It was probably too long. Sorry about that. And until next time, see you later.